What is up enthusiasts, it is Cedar Flags here and welcome back to another one of my videos. So if you don't know, a few days ago I came out with a video talking about if I owned certain roller coaster manufacturers, and let me say it did pretty well. And I was a really big fan of the video I put up. I loved making it, I loved brainstorming ideas, and for the fun of it, I wanted to do a part 2. Mention some more manufacturers, and because a lot of you guys liked that last video too. So without further ado, let's get into even more manufacturers. Now if you haven't watched part 1, I suggest you watch that first. So if you've watched that already, this is Cedar Flags and today I'm going to talk about owning more roller coaster manufacturers. The first company I want to talk about in this video is Bolliger & Mabillard, otherwise known as B&M for short. Now, this company has been a top player in the coaster industry for several decades now. Ever since the 90s, this company has been coming out with some of the greatest quality roller coasters out there, and a lot of their roller coasters, especially their hypers, are massive. Look at rides like Nitro at Great Adventure, Diamondback at Kings Island, and even the Gigas like Leviathan and Fury 325. These rides are grand, and with that comes an even greater price tag. In this era though, parks seem to be more on a budget, and I really feel like smaller is the way to go. More compact coasters have gotten the attention of enthusiasts, rather than the long, drawn out machines that we are all used to. So what do I think I would do if I were in charge? Well, I would focus on smaller, more compact roller coasters. Think of something like a Chance Hyper GTX, but a B&M. Think of a B&M Mini Hyper, probably around 80 to 150 feet. It would have a much smaller track type, so it would be a cheaper ride. It would be shorter, it would be more compact and fast paced, and most importantly, it would be cheaper. I think this would be the best route to go and maybe integrate them in other coaster types like a B&M Invert, maybe make a more compact version that is only two seats across and is more snappy. I think the enthusiasts would like this because they are more forceful I think Parks would love this because, well, it's a lot cheaper, and I think overall everyone would enjoy these new modern B&Ms that I've been talking about. The next manufacturer that I want to bring up is Great Coasters International, otherwise known as GCI for short. This company has been relevant since the 90s and has been making low to the ground and compact wooden coasters for decades now. This company has so many great wooden coasters out there, and they keep on progressing. So what would I do if I was in the seat of the owners? Well, recently they have advertised their Infinity Flyer trains and more diverse track types, including Titan Track. But what I would do is focus on something that they have only touched on, inversions. Currently there is not a single GCI operating with an inversion, and the GP as well as enthusiasts go absolutely nuts over wooden roller coasters that go upside down. So I think GCI should focus more on inversions. From their prototypes, we could tell that they are able to do inversions. So I say with every wooden coaster that you try to build, try to recommend inversions because I think inversions are the future of wooden coasters. And with a bigger and broader layout, they could maybe break the record for most inversions on a wooden coaster, which let's be honest, would not be that hard to break. The next company I want to talk about is one that is not as well known as the others. We are talking about Chance Rides. Now this company has been existing for several decades now and has only been with family style coasters. But recently in the past decade they have dabbled with thrill rides, more specifically the Chance Hyper GTX. The prototype came to Kentucky Kingdom in the early 2010s with Lightning Run and it shocked everyone. How could a coaster this thrilling and this intense go to a park like Kentucky Kingdom and be by chance rides. And in the next few years, we heard nothing about this ride model whatsoever. But in the past few years, we had two more of these announced and one confirmed to be built. That is Hot Wheels in Arizona. So what do we expect? And what would I do if I was the owner of Chance Rides? I would continue to expand the flexibility of the Chance Hyper GTX. It has the ability to launch, go upside down, have weightless airtime moments. Oh my goodness, the possibilities with this ride are endless. You can make blitz style coasters with this. 
similar to Intamin and Vacoma, you could really do anything with this model, the sky's the limit. And so if I were the owner of Chance Rides, I would continue to advertise and show the flexibility of the Chance Hyper GTX. The next company I want to talk about is Gerslauer. This European company has to be one of my favorites. I absolutely love the flexibility of this company. This company has made so many types of inversions and ride models, and they are just a very unique and diverse manufacturer. They are not afraid to experiment with different elements. And with that comes a new model that has been introduced in the past few years. There are two currently being built, and it is the inverted model. Gerstlauer has not yet made an inverted coaster that they have completed, but they currently have two on the way, one of them coming to Tusenford, and this ride looks absolutely incredible. As the leader of Gerstlauer, I would want there to be more. Just like the Chance Hyper GTX, I would want to advertise the inverted coaster more than they are already, try to make it as popular as their Eurofighter and Infinity models, and pave the way for the future of the inverted coaster because with their flexibility and inversion selection, they could truly make a unique ride with all of those inversions and an inverted track type. Now, think about it. If you're owning a park, what are you going to choose? That or a B&M invert that has less opportunity and would cost a lot more money. I feel like this could be the future of the inverted coaster, so I would invest a lot into that while still making sure that the Eurofighters and Infinities and Family Coasters are being built at a similar pace. Not pour all the money into the inverts, but show that they could do a lot more than other companies with their inverted coasters. Finally, we have Mock Rides. And unlike all of the other manufacturers I mentioned, I would want a new coaster type entirely. Now, this one's going to be a little far-fetched, so just stick with me on this one. Think about the rides that they have came out with already. They have made some great launch coasters like Copperhead Strike at Carowinds, Manta at SeaWorld San Diego, and Blue Fire at Europa Park, but notice that they have made other types of coasters like water coasters, even launched water coasters in rides like Pulsar and Aquaman, to be determined I guess. But anyways, I think they have a lot more opportunity when it comes to these water coasters. Let's look at the spinning coaster for example. They have came out with spinning coasters for several years now, more than a decade, and they used to be just great novelty family rides, but in the 2010s they decided to make the Mach Extreme Spinner, make a more elite version out of it, and made a world class spinning coaster. What if they did the same thing for a water coaster, made an extreme water coaster? Maybe made something with more ejector airtime, inversions, a very unique layout, followed by a splashdown. They could use a similar track type to what they are using already. Think about a blitz coaster but with a splashdown. Think of like blue fire, that layout, and then having a splashdown at the end. They could use maybe a thinner track type, but I think this would be a really cool idea. Call it the extreme water coaster and bam, you got a new idea on your hands. Back in 2010, if you said that there was going to be a spinning coaster with all of these inversions like Time Traveler or Ride to Happiness, people would think you were insane but they made it a reality. Why can't they do it with the water coaster? Well, let me know what you think down in the comments below. That was my video. Let me know what you thought about all of these decisions, and let me know if I should do a part three with even more manufacturers. Once again, let me know all down in the comments below. Check out my merch store in the description, and this is Cedar Flags. I'll see you all later.